back to the channel. I know it's been an extremely long time and there's good explanation for that. Mainly, usually I have two trucks to drive and the Cummins can sit and I have time to work on it and do the stuff that we enjoy doing, the fun stuff. But the market's been so bad that I haven't been able to buy another truck, so I've been daily driving my Cummins. Right now is a little bit of an awkward moment. I went and bought another truck today and I'm looking at both of them and this other truck could potentially take the spot of the silver truck as the race truck on the channel. That would mean one of them has to go and I would buy another daily driver truck. And there's a lot of, it's not just because of like simple stuff, like there was a lot of thought that went behind this. Not only because it was a good deal, but there's a lot of parts on this truck that I wanted to put on my truck. We'll just go through it. So, you know, let's just show them both of them. If you don't know which truck is the new truck, then you need to hit that subscribe button and figure it out. It's a 06 59, same thing as that one. It's a, I mean, it's a little rough around the edges, but that truck was rough around the edges when I got it. So if, if that's gonna skew your guys' opinion, don't worry, that truck, the whole bumper was trashed when I got it. So there's some paint scratches and stuff on this. I'm not worried about that. I, this year I'd really, not even just this year, but I wanted something that was not not a full race truck, but competition oriented. Something that I could take out on the weekends and bust a Corvette's ass on the highway if I wanted to. I mean, that's that's what it is. And take to the strip, and have some fun, and we'll go over some of these differences real quick. Okay. Don't mind the fact that this thing's absolutely filthy. I've been daily driving it for the last three months, but there was a lot of stuff on this truck when I built it that I didn't know. I, I had asked as many questions as I could before I bought parts from forums to shops to the people that supply the products. And I got skewed the wrong way a lot of times. And looking back at what I know now, there's a lot of stuff I want to change on this, but the price to do so is so high that when I seen this truck come up for, well, I'm not going to hide price from you guys. I really don't care. I bought this truck when we got it, I bought it for 20,000 and it had a built trans EFI live head studs, valve springs and push rods. And it had some pitted chrome, 22s on it um, We've done everything else to this truck and We actually done everything to this truck twice because of stuff. I didn't know and I had to find out the hard way which is Pretty much the main point of this channel is so that if there's somebody else like me That's not getting the right answers and not getting Basically just getting bullcrap I don't want you guys to have to um, waste the same amount of money I did on wrong answers. This truck has costed me a lot of money. I mean, the injectors were a perfect example. Had I have known that the industrials were what they are, I would have went. I would have spent the extra money and went with XRG or SNSs or maybe even DDPs. But I didn't know that, and it ended up costing me. Like it was another two grand or something, which these injectors have been fine so far, you know, knock on wood. But the first set, if I had known that I was going to have those issues, I would have just went with a bigger company and spent the money ahead. There's a lot of stuff that I'll tell you guys that you can save money on. And 
we're gonna go through all of that in this video it might be a very might be a long video but i promise you it'll be worth it and i think everything will make sense to you guys afterward but anyways some of the main things that i wanted to change about this was when i bought this 12 millimeter pump it's a single pump when i bought it i made several phone calls before i spent the money on it and i think it was like 2300 bucks or something like that it might have been more but they told me when i called that this pump would do 1500 horsepower no problem i was like all right cool then i don't need dual fuelers because that was my question do i get dual fuelers and know that it works because the dual fuelers were a little bit more expensive or will this 12 mil single do me fine they steered me the wrong way and said it'd be good for 1500 and then after i bought it they tell me that it's only good for right at a thousand i was like well that kind of would have been nice to know ahead of time so to get the dual fueler kit now it's two grand 22 uh, two grand to 2400 ish and that's that's a big chunk of change to buy it whenever if they would have just you know said the truth the first time i wouldn't have had this issue so that's that's one of the main main things dual fuelers the second thing when i built this i really wanted a steed speed manifold but they were steed speeds are expensive i mean nobody's gonna sit here and say they're not but at the end of the day they look better i think they sound better they probably flow better than these ats's but i mean the ats is something you can save money on and it it does its job it's just for aesthetics and what i personally wanted and i think i even said this way back when for those of you guys that have been around for a while is that i wanted a steed speed this truck just so happens to have a steed speed i wanted my turbo in the high mount location and this is all i had to work with so it's in the low mount which for upcoming plans that you guys have no clue about yet the turbo has to be in the high mount location um i'm just gonna leave it at that leave you guys on your tippy toes but there's a lot of stuff this I, this truck's a full auto truck i wanted a full manual which if some of you guys might not know what i mean i'll show you with this truck i wanted a full manual valve body for me to convert it'd be 2500 dollars. so just between the pump mistake and getting the trans to where i actually want it it's five grand you add on the steed speed and now you're at 6200 and then i'd say that the high mount down pipe and intercooler pipes probably let's say 500 bucks we're at 6700 i think <sighs> let's come around and show them let's show them let's show them <laughs> the rest it's happened indiana has gotten to her it's not horrible but it drives me nuts like i try not to open this door because it makes me cringe and it it's kind of upsetting but for me to get the rest fixed it's 1500 bucks and there's no guarantee that it's not coming back so now we're 77 80 200 just in four things um this doesn't have trans fans it just has the factory cooler up front so this trans gets extremely hot when i try to do stuff that i want to do with it like racing um i've seen this trans up to like 240 degrees and we were we were just driving around at um like a truck meet it was just we were following each other around and this trans about killed itself so for me to get dual trans coolers with dual fans i priced it and it was going to be almost 900 dollars. now it puts us up to 9100 um let's see I'm trying to knock everything off the list that steering that was another big one uh this still has the third gen steering which any of you guys that are familiar with these trucks the crossover steering in the fourth gens is much better, much better design. For me to go to that, 
which this was a Heim joint setup, but it was $1,200. This truck already has fourth gen steering on it. Excuse me. Um, and that doesn't get you the dual stabilizers that this truck has. And I think that was another 400 bucks or something like that. So in total, we're probably gonna say 1600 on that. What, was it? what did I leave off at, 92? So 10 to 10, eight. We're already at $10,800 I have to put in this truck. And that's not including any fun parts. Like that's just to make this what I want. That's a lot of money. Um, God, there's so much stuff. Oh, valve cover. I hate these plastic valve covers with a passion. They look like hell. I don't, I mean, they look better than the, like the 03 to 05 trucks, but it, it's plastic. And I don't like, anyways, I won't rant about it, but that truck has a King Speed valve cover. That valve cover is $900 to put uh that valve cover on it has to have a catch can the catch can's like a hundred and we'll just call it a thousand even for the valve cover and the catch can setup so now we're at 11 8. um this intake horn was on the truck when i got it uh, the original idea of this truck was to be a budget build you know let's see how how cheap you can get away with making a thousand horsepower truck and since this was already on it, you know, it, it does the job, whatever. I just left it on there. Um, I really don't like these style. They, they're just not that appealing to me. I don't like the two piece grid heater delete. I don't like, I just don't like it. So to get the one that, that truck has, is like $450. So now you're at 12, I don't know, like 12, five, 12 two, something like that. Um, trying to go through everything. My God, there's so much. I'm gonna. I knew I was gonna forget it. Uh, the mirrors were another thing. I don't like the fourth gen mirrors on this truck. They were on it when I got it. And I know some people like them. Whatever. Everybody's got their, you know, their own style, but. Third gens are curved body styles, so these mirrors look like a sore thumb to me. And when I first got the truck, I didn't mind them, but I like wasn't like, oh my god, it's got fourth gen mirrors. <laughs> so this truck has third gen mirrors that are paint matched, and I think they look a hundred times better. Just because, I mean, this was the design of the truck. These, I just don't like them. And the chrome is starting to pit on the mirror cap. And they've always, which you can't see it right now, but right through here, there's a big scratch in them that I couldn't get out. I think it was going to be like 450 bucks for me to get new mirrors and then get them paint matched. So now we're 12.6 or 12.8 or something like that. Point being, there's a lot of stuff on this truck I wanted to change. And it would have cost me a lot of money. And not that... Like, I have a lot of money in this truck. I added everything up, and some of it was on it when I got, like, the trans and stuff. But in total, there's, like, $36,000 in parts in this truck. That's not including labor. That's not including my time. That's not including the purchase price of the truck. That's just how much money's in parts on it. Which, yes, that's a lot of money. And as my girlfriend asked me, she said, if you sell this, wouldn't you be losing money? And the point I want to bring across to you guys is the same as I did her is that this truck has better parts and it's the same same build. Like it's still a high horsepower build with better parts. So it, this probably has more money in it. And I bought it for less than I bought that one for when it just had a trans, the turbo was stock, injectors are stock, pump was stock. It didn't have any powder coat. It had some pitted fuel wheels on it the whole front bumper was chipped off tailgate was chipped off 
they didn't have that grill obviously which I think I'll probably I think I'll probably keep that grill if we do decide to go this route this truck long-winded I know so basically this truck I'd have to put let's just say 13.5 in it to get it where I would be happy with it and where our next step in competition comes in which I'm trying to keep this a secret but to be competitive at the level I want to be at all the stuff I just mentioned I would want done which the mirrors and stuff like that don't matter but a lot of the stuff does matter this truck I bought for 19.8 I had to drive a very long way and I just got home and I have zero sleep and I've been up for what time was it like seven so 25 hours I worked yesterday and then I tried to sleep a little bit yesterday evening and I couldn't so I left here at one o'clock we drove down to Woodstock Alabama to get this and I just got back it was like 16 hours there and back. But I bought this for $19.8. That's only $6,300 more than I was gonna have to put into that. And it, I mean, there's still a potential that, I didn't even mention the hood, hell. But this, here, let's pull this down. This is a SRT 10 carbon fiber hood. It's 1,500 bucks. I really wanted one for mine. But there's not a chance that I spent fifteen hundred dollars on it. So now we're at fifteen ten, and that basically that's basically saying I could put fifteen thousand dollars in parts in that, and there's a chance that the rest might still come back. And at the end of the day, why would I put fifteen thousand dollars in that when I bought this for nineteen eight? I mean, I basically gave forty eight hundred dollars for the whole truck, and I got the parts I wanted. Which 198 for this this build's really good. What the hell is that? You're on the floor now? I don't know. We'll pick right back up. If you guys haven't noticed, I like to goof off quite a bit. But nonetheless, basically I have like forty eight hundred bucks in this truck if you would consider just the parts I was gonna buy to put on that. But that's not, like one of the big things is this has a PPE dual feeler kit. This has the wide uh, intake that I really like and it sits lower. I, just, I love the way that looks. Um, another big thing is that this is already wire tucked. Makes this engine bay look so much cleaner. And obviously I'm not a huge fan of the purple, but well, I guess that might not be obvious, but I'm not a fan of the purple. Um, this has the high mount kit already. It has the speed feed. And it's got manifold studs. It's another thing that at the time I couldn't afford. I mean, I probably could have, but feasibly I wasn't spending $260 on, you know, bolts. Um, this already has that, so that was another bonus. Um, it's got the downpipe obviously for the high mount. It's got the intercooler stuff for the high mount. This already has the shock tower deletes and it already has the shorter shocks. Um, I did buy shock tower deletes for that truck and they are already powder coated, but I didn't have shocks yet. So that's another, I think it was like 600 bucks to get the shocks I wanted, which these are, I think these are probably equivalent. These are Bilstein 5160s, I think. Um, has the vibrant catch can, the King Speed valve cover. I love those valve covers so much. Well, they have so much detail. Um, another another thing that this has that mine never got was the fleece um, fuel pump delete block. Uh, it's got the fleece distribution block. Um, some T's here. Get 
get him strolling by, get him strolling by. I'm kidding. Next walker fella. Um... I get home and it's so noisy. Anyways, if I do, I'm not gonna hide anything from you guys. It has a clear coat chip right here, but you're right, the best paint guy around, we'll fix that. Um, I hate these wheels and tires with a passion, so if I kept this, the forces would be coming off and going on here. Um, the springs would, I'd still be keeping our blue, so the springs would be the blue, our shock tower deletes are already blue. The, um, the long arm kit we got for that truck obviously will fit this truck or the same thing. Um, we'll come into the interior and this is absolutely my favorite part. I, I was having so much fun on the way home. Yes, sir. But that was, that was a big, really big, um, feature to me that I wanted and that really raised my eyes to this truck. Another thing, which I don't know if I mentioned it or not, was the gauges. I wanted to put a quadruple pillar just like this in my truck with hardwired gauges. Because the CTSs are great, but I don't think that they're... I don't think they'll ever be as accurate as a hardwired gauge. So it's got all four of them. It's got uh, rail pressure, trans temp, boost, exhaust gas temperature. Um... If I do keep this truck, I'm gonna put my CTS-2 right here. They make a mount, so I think that would be cool. Uh, this has the Apple CarPlay radio, so my, which is cool to me because I've never had one. My map and everything comes up on there. I can go through all my apps just like my phone. Uh, the interior is subpar, horrible at best. It's nowhere near my my likings but you know i i know i can get it to where i'm satisfied this tab right here on this piece is broken drives me nuts the whole way home i was sitting there just smacking it but uh i'd obviously put our car mats in here one thing i really love about this interior in particular is it is a lot lighter um the laramies which this is just an SLT truck. My truck's a Laramie. So it has double pane glass. It's supposed to make it quieter, which it probably does, but that glass adds 100 pounds around the truck, maybe 150. And my truck has heated leather seats that are fully power adjustable, so they weigh a lot more than these cloth seats. And these are fourth gen seats, by the way. But these seats, when I was talking about getting this truck i was thinking about swapping my leather seats in here but these seats are more comfortable than my leather seats and they're lighter so for a competition truck it's lighter more comfortable better all around um let's see i think that's oh the business console which they don't have i don't know who the redneck was that put that gigantic tube through the original cup holder but it looks like trash i think they think they've probably done that because they didn't want to modify the four-wheel drive shifter but i'm going to anyways i've got the rest of the business console right here in the bed so my plan is to put that shifter right here and through bolt it that way it can't move and then i'll probably have a cut out here so i can reach my hand in there and put it in four-wheel drive but I really wanted to put a business console in that truck. But these are like $460 or something like that. And yeah, I just, you know, it's a really hard pill to swallow for plastic. Another thing is the dual trans fans. This truck, I drove it for a little over eight hours today. And I wasn't exactly being easy on it. And the trans never went above 140 degrees in my truck to put it into perspective my truck runs at like 170 all the time and on hotter days it runs like 200 so for this to be at 140 and today's 75 degrees i think it was the high today wasn't it 72 
and it didn't get hot. It didn't even remotely get hot. Not a huge fan of the stack. Um, I'd really like to carry over the bed cover from there to here. And I think my nitrous setup will fit right there on the opposite side of the stack hole. I don't really care about the hole in the bed. That's weight savings. Um, and I think, I actually, I got another hood with this that's got a hood stack hole cut in it. Let's just say we might not have enough room down the road for an exhaust. So we have a spare hood. Do it. <laughs> hint, hint. Big, big. Here, let's get down underneath here with them. Look at that. That's it. Where are we? Indiana. No. No. We no, must be in not. Texas. We're in Florida. There's something wrong with this truck. There's no <laughs> rust. There's no <laughs> rust. But in all reality, this truck is extremely clean. There's no rust anywhere. Usually, there's a right around in here somewhere. It might be further up, but there, yeah, right here. There's a hole in the back, which this is a good tip to anybody going to look at one of these. These, all trucks rust from the inside out. So on third gen specifically, there's a cutout right here in the rocker. You can reach your finger in there and feel the back side of this. And there's not a speck of rust in here. There's road grime, but there's no, no rust. So that was a, a major, major buying factor. No rust and it was cheaper than the truck I bought. It was, are you looking at the AC dripping still? Yeah, I don't know why it drips so bad, but yeah, that's the AC. But yeah, no rust. The, uh, I think the guy owned a petting zoo or some shit because of the where he shaved a small or he just has a cool girlfriend with a dog no he, he definitely shaved the sheep in there or something <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't wear a seatbelt so that's, that's you don't something. either you guys have something in common subs hmm. it doesn't have the oh no extra nitrous bottle it doesn't, mine has a plastic um, tool container. That might be like a Laramie thing, I guess. Again, weight reduction. Um, trying to make sure we hit. Oh, this has, my truck being a Laramie has the four wheel drive on the switch, which yes, it's nice, but they are problematic. Um, I don't really, as a competition truck, I don't really want to be messing with vacuum lines because my four wheel drive won't work. I'd much rather, like I, I do like the way that the switch looks, it's clean, but I know that every time I grab that shifter, unless the linkage is broke, that it's going to go into four wheel drive. Um, just trying to hit everything I can. camera it looks so bad but there's a dent right here i think i can have some like a professional pull that out if not our manager uh, will set us up um where we used to uh play mall crawler our fenders got a little more than destroyed so i'd have to buy two new front fenders for this this one's super clean um you better dodge that coming here um, the taillights, some Bobby Tom thought it'd be cool to spray paint them. They look terrible. Thankfully, I've got new taillights that could be paint matched. If you guys think this is going to be the better of the two racetracks. Personally, where I'm at with it and knowing what I've got coming uh, that was originally intended to be a part of the silver truck, I think that since this already has so much more of what I want and better parts, better quality parts, 
and it has zero rust, I think that we'd be money ahead, time ahead, and probably longevity of the investment would be better. I would really hate to fix all the rust on that truck and then in two years see that it came back. Um, that would really suck. Which, like I said, this, this thing is not perfect. It definitely needs my touch. And I'm cool with that. I, to be honest with you, I kind of miss... Uh, I like building them more than I do owning them. So, since I haven't got to do much with the silver truck, I just start nitpicking stuff. Uh, that's that's what I do. Shill a test, 100%. Mm -hmm. I can't help it. I've, I've nitpicked it from the moment I put stuff together on it. And now it's to the point where I got a hell of a deal on this. It's got a lot of the stuff I wanted. And I don't really see it feasible to take all the parts off of this that I like and put them in that because this body's cleaner. Um, that it'd be it'd be a ridiculous amount of work and to really even push the point further that truck won't be the same the silver truck if i was to do all the stuff i had planned to do it wouldn't be the same truck anyways so literally the only thing changing is i'm getting a bunch of new parts and a new color like basically just think of it as we repainted the silver truck as a gray truck like that's basically it. And we put claw seats in. But, I don't know. Comment down below what you guys think. If you guys like the gray one more. If you guys understand where I'm coming from. Or if you guys just hate the idea and think that we should stick with a silver truck and I go broke. I don't know. know. There will be a lot more content coming with this one. If we decide to go this route. But that's going to wrap it up for today, guys. Comment down below whether you think we should go ahead and build old Clappy. Clappy. <laughs> Your goose here. Uh, or if we should stick to that one. I don't really name my trucks, so. This is Clappy. That's OG. No. <laughs> Alright. Thank you guys for tuning in and I appreciate all the support. Subscribe if you haven't already. And have a good day.